Is gold about to rally? Is it over for silver and bonds? All that and more on this Miners and Metals edition of Sunday Night Charts. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter. Thanks for joining me today. Let's kick this off with, right, let's get right into the GLD. We'll look at the RSI relative strength indicator. Here we can see it's came down and it's struggling to get underneath 50 and break higher. And when that happens in the past, you can go back here uh, to August and see where it just got marginally above 50 and then it came back down and look at what happened to price. It struggled and went lower. So from a relative strength position, doesn't look like we've got a gold rally at hand. Let's take a look at the MACD, which is your moving average crossover. And here you see the shorter term moving average on the black line crossed down through the slightly longer trending moving average in red. And well, what does that tell us that, yes, this is a, a bearish divergence here. Now you can notice that, and you can barely see it, the black line's trying to flatten out and perhaps set the stage for early cross. But if it breaks lower, well, then you've got the RSI and the MACD saying lower goal, but how about Momentum Timer Pro, yeah, it's got seven days of sell signals on GLD. So three together saying, yeah, this isn't the opportunity if you're looking to jump in, but maybe the volume profile will tell us something different. But let's take first look at the major moving averages. We see only a bearish picture on the 21 day. Otherwise, momentum on the 50 and 100 look good across the board. Price on the 50 and momentum look good. We'll, look at, we'll take a look at those in a moment. The only negative here is really on the 21 day moving average, which prices below that that's not really a huge deal compared to the rest is above the 50 day that's nice above the 100 day and it's key on these longer term momentums it's higher than it was where it was three and six months ago that is excellent let's take a look and see if perhaps the volume has a different picture for gold and what you can see here is let's instead of using the ETF, we'll actually use the futures for gold futures. And you'll notice that 1786, this is a six month volume profile. And look at these candles. You see price came down and it's held these. And so that is very good. The, just because the moving averages are so tightly wound together here, we don't get a clear picture, but the volume is telling us there's something going on. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit and then we'll come back in. Look at the one years right there at 1790. So again, buyers very clearly trying to hold that level let's go out two years and what do you see there it is right there 1796 so you know you, you can see where the buyers are at they're at 1800 now let's zoom in to the last 10 days get a picture of this price action we still have a sell off and then a rally off that and look at there's your volume profile it's suggesting right there at 1800 on the 10 day telling you that the likely direction at least in the short term you know regardless of what the rsi macd and momentum time bro are telling you uh there should be another move higher look for a run up to 1720 uh, but if you're bullish on gold, guess what's been rejected every time, right? Everything above, uh, as I say, I meant 1820. Everything above that gets uh, rejected. All right, let's keep going on to ah, gold miners, GDX. Similar story here. We're seeing some weakness on the RSI. It came back down. You notice it's still it's under 50 and it tried to get a little strength here but it just puttered out fell down and this oversold condition here really didn't turn into a rally it just the momentum is kind of waning there let's take a look at the macd we see a similar like a position to goal where we see a crossover of the shorter term moving average to the longer term one and the shorter term one's flattening out doesn't look like it's curving higher that does not bode well for the miners and keep in mind the miners lead the metal and of course, Momentum Timer Pro confirms both the MACD and the RSI, six consecutive straight days of sell signals. So it's none of those are saying this is your opportunity if you're looking to jump in. How about price momentum? Price on all the moving averages is weaker heading down. Momentum on the 21 day and 50 are bearish. Looking at the major moving averages below everything between 21 and 100. All, I mean, this is pretty ugly. It's below the one through 12 month momentum. So everything below where it was trading in those previous points is all negative. That's not a good sign for GDX. It tells you that a lot of momentum algorithms, if they hold it, won't be holding it much longer. And what do we see now? Completely diff different picture than gold. Notice the volume profile line is at 32.48 on a six month chart. Let's zoom out one on the one year and notice the pr that volume profile is above. So the question is, are we seeing a bottom here? Let's zoom into the 30 day profile and no, we see price volume price is, the, is above as seen at 31.29. So everything above that is getting sold. Let's go out to the 90 day, see if we can pick up some more of this trading volume here and notice that every time 
you see people coming and buying these dips in GDX. Everything above, it looks like 30.52 gets sold and because sellers are moving down their levels lower and lower and lower. So it tells you that this position here that we're seeing on GDX is likely to get rejected right in here. Maybe it's got to run into the low 31s, but look for this to roll over and head down. And that is dangerous because if GDX breaks out below, say, 2880 or maybe even 28 then that's telling you liquidity in the markets it's gone and everybody's falling this thing lower so not a good picture for uh the metals but maybe hey maybe gold can rally against that and pull the miners with it let's take a look at silver some more story here came went from an oversold condition in late december early january on the rsi started to build some strength price started to follow it higher and rsi rolled over it's back under 50 looking like it's headed down to an oversold condition and let's see with the macd ooh, much uglier position here see the crossover just like with uh, gld and gdx but now the short-term moving average isn't flattening out is heading lower so that is your bearish diversions telling you price very likely to head lower on silver and momentum timer pro five consecutive days of sell signals on its daily signal remember if you're not signed up for this it's still free and those who are on the list when it goes paid well you're going to get a one time pretty spectacular discount and i don't know when that day will come but someday it will all right let's go on to the moving averages before we look at the chart and nothing but red here now normally when we see red on this it tells us we're perhaps near a bottom. Uh, I don't know that we're there yet. Let's take a look at the charts and see if there's any optimism um, on silver. Let's go to the silver futures and, and we're on the two year chart. And you can see this is just a massive topping pattern. Uh, looking at the two year chart, everything at 2417 and above gets rejected. You can see price comes up, a series of lower highs. And so that's not pretty. This thing breaks below, say, 20, what's, what's my line at here? 2186 or somewhere right about that. And again, you're, where where's this headed? Well, 1780. You know, you look at where the next chunk of volume's at, and that's down below. Let's zoom in on the six-month volume profile, and we can see it is trying to hold it. It's trying to hold. The buyers are trying to come in here and hold on to this at 22.52. Let's go to the 90-day window, and you can tell the buyers really want this. I mean, they're bullish on it, but there's just not enough strength behind their bullishness to drive price very high. Let's look at the 10-day and see it's sitting right at the 10 day window every time it comes down it kind of runs right into into quicksand or a swamp right there at the 10 day window you can see it sitting there 2254 so uh, could you see a possible pop in silver yes but everything's telling you it's probably headed lower let's take a look at the dollar and this looked like we had a bit of a rally kind of going on uh you notice the, uh, the price was holding up pretty flat across the top here rsi was slowing down and then it got kind of a tailwind and boom right back down below 50 so relative strength is telling you that perhaps there's downward pressure on the dollar let's take a look at the macd Ooh, and look at that just the other day a crossover shorter term moving average across the longer term one that is bearish for price those who follow the macd uh, and it doesn't mean price necessarily has to go down you can see it crossed over here in october and there was just a little bit of weakness in price before it bottomed out but this is a pretty sharp angle at the moment uh, but the mac so the macd doesn't tell you that the, the floor is coming out it just tells you that price may not be rallying in the immediate future if you get a similar picture here to october now you might be it might be in a picture um it, it knows how low this is the crossover that's why i tell that's why i think that you're not going to see a huge sell-off here in the dollar uh, compared to some of these other points where the price was higher and then the moving averages crossed and stayed lower but we'll see uh, momentum timer probe uh, out of the last 10 days only three of the signals were sell with friday being one of them um, um otherwise what we're seeing here is you know a lot of buy signals and they're still holding up but let's see if the charts well let's let's look at the longer term signals so 21 day and 50 day price and momentum are bearish um no, that's not that good um the dollar seems to be following the 100 day moving average we'll look at that in a moment so where it's bullish there below the 9 21 and 50 day moving averages but this hasn't been an issue for the dollar uh, but the overall broader picture of momentum is strongly behind it 
let's take a look at where the UUP is at. And here, let's take a look. So six month volume profile, definitely telling you that, hey, this, the, there's still, still a battleground, still fight being duked out here at 25.73. No breakout on the dollar yet. Uh, you'll notice this cross below the 50 day moving average and then bounce back up and then back through. The 50 day almost isn't relevant here. And let's look out, let's zoom out to, what's that a little too far? How about the two year chart? And what do you see across this is the, the 100 day, which is the blue line, and reconfirms the bottom of it here. Finally, starts to bottom as a zigzagging around the 100 day, and then confirms the 100 day after it crosses here. It doesn't quite confirm it, but still holding it. it. Confirms it here and is back at it again. And you notice on the two year chart, you've got a lot of volume support right here at 25.28. So, from a dollar perspective, this thing is definitely, you know, it could come down and hit this 25, 28 level and confirm that this is kind of a bottom, uh, you know, nice bottoming pattern. Um, but otherwise, the dollar certainly isn't dead. Let's look at a bigger picture here. And you can see on DXY, it's just hitting that 100 day moving average is still in a buy zone. This here, this was a sell zone between 95 and, um, you know, just low 96 or maybe high 95 there. So it's still in there. There's still a shot the dollar could bounce back up here and get into back into that break through that 97 into the $98 range. And that'd be bad news for the market. Now, is it over for the bond king? As we look at deferred dollars or TLT, uh, the long bond, and RSI, you know, struggling below 50, telling you there's a lot of weakness here. Uh, it didn't quite get to oversold conditions. It got close and it looks like it's headed back there. So that's not good. How about the MACD? Well, we saw a crossover uh, last week and it looks like it's kind of about to cross over to the downside after crossing over the top side. Again, it could just be suggesting that we're seeing a bottom here. That uh, doesn't mean the floor is completely falling out. We've seen in the past, uh, going back to March and April, before it went on a nice rally, it crossed over, went kind of right back and then took off. So uh, inconclusive here on the MACD, how about Momentum Timer Pro 31 consecutive days of sell signals? And those of you who follow MTP know that when you get a lot of consecutive sell signals, that at some point you're near a turning point. How about on the broader picture, price on the moving averages all headed down, below all the key moving averages, all the momentum signals are negative, saying that all the computerized programs should be selling if they have it. The only thing that's positive here is the momentum on the moving averages is bullish. Uh, let's take a look at price and see if there's anything in the volume profile in TLT that would tell us different. And the answer is not really. So you look at the two year chart, you see uh, the big chalk of volumes way up here, uh, down here as you zoom in and we'll see if we can do that a little bit without changing this chart too much. Um, what you see is down here, we're right in this zone of volume and we didn't quite zoom to where I wanted to. Let's go back out to the one year chart. There was a lot of buying down here at 133 to 140. And right now we're right in that smack in that volume of where there were a lot of buyers. So it, we should be looking for a bottom here. And I think the RSI, the MACD, are indicating that and Momentum Time Pro is saying, hey, we're really close to that. So I would be looking for a potential bottom here. Now, if we're looking strictly at volume, you're not going to see it because the 10-day volume profile has been up here and says this is where the sellers were at and price has already gone down. So the question is, isn't did price go down? It did. The question is, is this is where it's stopping? And so uh, from from a broad macro view, it's not over for the king yet. But you know, since, since we're looking at trading in this show, well, the, the traders have definitely... Uh, got their day on them. All right, let's take a look at the energy sector, which is kind of the nemesis, nemesis to the bond king. Of course, we know the energy and bonds don't trade perfectly inverse, but when energy's up, bonds tend to be down. And we know XLE very overbought conditions. And remember, you could stay overbought for a lot longer. Price is shooting higher. So the RSI is confirming that perhaps price could keep going up. MACD looked like it was getting close to maybe a cross, but it's it's continuing to drive higher. So positive signals here on the RSI and MACD. How about Momentum Timer Pro, 22 days consecutive buy signals. It, the, so the three are confirming that momentum is definitely behind the energy sector here. How about the moving average? Absolutely, 21 day, 50, 100 day, all bullish. Momentum almost bullish across the board, above all the key moving averages, all the momentum screens are positive. I mean, everything looks really good for the energy sector. So let's take a look at XLE and see if there's anything we can tell. And the answer is we have to go to the five-year chart and see where the volume profile is. And this is the last point 
you know, you see when you see where the volume kind of tapers off here and then gets real thin and then kind of builds back up. Usually you see kind of inflection points right at those little shorter gaps and where it kind of holds up. So if you're looking for a reversal in the energy sector uh, and perhaps one in the bond market, we could see it here as this thing's gone vertical and price off the charts for sure on crude. So. I'd be looking potentially for a reversal as this thing is overextended to see sellers come in, given you know what we're seeing on the RSI, MACD, and Momentum Timer Pro. And if that reverses, well, that could give bonds a bit of a boost. So uh, with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Bye now. The content of this video is provided as educational information only. is not intended by investor or advice. This material is not to be construed as a recognition or solicitation by our selling security, financial instrument, or participate in any particular trade strategy. This video was prepared by Steve Van Meter. Personal capacity, business expresses video that do not affect the value of Alice or Steve Van Meter Financial.